conversation already. before before the technical difficulties. Now, go ahead. You want to start already? Go ahead. I do. So, yeah, Reverend Roger. Yes. And Minister Lisa. Good to meet everybody. Right See everybody. Here. Yeah. Listen, he has had a daughter who went to prom last yeah. night. Yeah. Oh, I had a prom. I had a prom last night. I had a prom last night. And, and, and it's okay. Because what I was just saying that no matter what happens in the world, my, my, my young people are here. They're here that's in the it. sanctuary, right? So on the Sunday morning after prom, that's where you ask where my daughter is. That's right. That's right. That's right. So in the church building. The, in the church. Welcome do what you to do. New, do what you do. Welcome to New Bethel Come Baptist on, Daddy, do what you do. Church here in Washington D.C. It doesn't matter where you are it in the world because NB is anywhere. anywhere. And and listen, last week if you missed it last week, we were standing delivering, yes. and that was phenomenal. Come we, on, Minister come Reagan. On, t- 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 come on, you better do, do it. Fire. 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 She Fire. taught that thing, broke that thing down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she wasn't playing with us. Yeah, yeah. That whole maid servant thing, yeah. the, 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 what's the, 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 the lady that delivers the baby? Forget my that's name. It, you, that's you it, the, the midwife. Come on. midwife. And she there talked about go. the midwife. Oh, my gosh. Phenomenal. That was crazy. Phenomenal. Every time we're here, whether we're here in the sanctuary, whether we're on Wednesdays with the women or whether yeah. we're with the men, it doesn't matter where we are. We're getting filled with the spirit Absolutely. of God. It doesn't matter Absolutely. where you are. In the world, yeah. we're getting, and, and 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 you are our leader of the NBA anywhere. I aren't am. You, you I am the leader of NBA yeah. anywhere. And look, this is the thing that I love about this. I just took uh, almost an hour and a half to get here today because yeah. all yeah. the roads in DC are closed. Yeah. So NBA, holler at your girl. Yeah, yeah. You ain't had to take ninety minutes today. You that's sitting right. there chilling. That's right. About to get your word in. I know yeah. that's right. Listen, no matter where you no are, no matter it's, where it's you are, and you don't have to go through the traffic no. to be able to deal with it. So it's phenomenal. And you still get your word. And this yeah. is the thing that I love. You not only get your word, but an opportunity for you to really engage with other believers yeah. Yeah. that have the same belief that yeah, can yeah. help you grow yeah. and develop in yeah, our yeah. small groups. Yeah. So I absolutely love that we have this opportunity to That's really right. That's right. be in flow together across right. the country. It's That's a good right. thing. That's right. Not That's just your thing. not just your small groups, but your online chat. Yes. Not just your online chat, but but experiencing God together yeah, yeah, right and so yeah. so one thing that we want to point out is that we have our 120 year anniversary this coming year. up right this year we are in 120 years That's of amazing serving this community it is phenomenal amazing a church that has been serving in the community for 120 years i tell you honestly i'm a newbie really yeah. to, to um new bethel i've not even been here i don't think a year and so the yeah. thing that's cool to me is that one of the things that brought me here is that this is a church that has rich history yeah. Yeah. and also that's really doing really, really good work yeah. 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 in the community. Because that's yeah. important to me yeah. as a believer, yeah. 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 that yeah. we're not just coming to church gathering, but we're doing some stuff. Yeah, you know, Pastor always says that we're, we're, we're shirt and ties and T-shirts and jeans, yes. right? Yes. It doesn't yes. matter how you're coming to the space because, he, you know, God is going to receive you. And, and after Absolutely. 120 years, I've been here, you know, got married in the church. Mm-hmm. I've been in this church boy about 28 years that's amazing i've been in this church my family has been in this church three generations that's amazing right and now we have a fourth generation wow. and so so this church has that's acted amazing. as a pillar and 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 and, and a rock and, and it's a pillar and rock for you too so if this is your first time right put a one in the chat we have on chat online hosts mm-hmm. they will respond to you we want to welcome you we want you to text connect to yes. 798 Nine two seven to let us know that you want to connect yeah. with us and somebody will reach back out to you. But other than that, listen, go enjoy yourself. Get ready for this worship. Any any last words you, you know want to say? You know what the last thing I want to say what is something say? that one of the first things you said to me when we met. Come you on. said, Lisa, be careful because New Bethel is sticky. Yeah. And that you will get stuck. Yeah, you will. And so here's the thing. He was right. That's right. I'm here. Yeah. And so I know it's sticky for you too. Oh, so, so good. Get engaged. Don't don't just don't evade the stickiness. Yeah. Allow the stickiness to stick to you and get engaged. Get involved in whatever it is that you see that works for you. I know we just had the um, call now what class that's gonna swing back around. So if you missed it this time, it's coming back. That's right. And there's another class that's coming up too. Yeah, yeah. We'll hear more about yeah, it. Yeah, some stuff coming up. Yeah, don't, yeah. Miss don't, it. don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. God bless you. Enjoy the service. Enjoy the service. God bless you. Good deal. See you after. <laughs> All right. See you later.
Good morning, saints, and welcome to New Bethel. My name is Deaconess Smeedy Bartonelli, and these are your Sunday morning announcements. It is election season, saints, and D.C. residents are invited to attend a candidate forum with candidates running for the at-large council seats and for D.C. Attorney General, as well as chair of the city council. Please join us here in the sanctuary as this forum will take place on Wednesday, June 1st at 6 p.m. This form will also be streamed live on our church website, but to attend in person, please go to Eventbrite and search PSP Candidate Form. This year marks 120 years of ministry within these walls right here at New Bethel Baptist Church. And what a pivotal milestone this is. As a family, we're gonna continue with this celebration this year with a powerful praise, powerful worship, and powerful prayer. So join us on Saturday, June 4th at 9 a.m for our celebratory prayer breakfast at the RISE Demonstration Center at 2730 Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue Southeast. Tickets are only $20, Saints, so please don't wait. Make sure because we want you to be there with us. Tickets can be purchased via our church website or you can get them right after church today in the church narthex. Don't delay, as I said, because today is the last day to purchase tickets in person. And last day for the online purchases will be on this Tuesday. Who doesn't love to celebrate? I'm sure we all do. And as a church family, we are celebrating 120 years of New Bethel's ministry. And on Sunday, June 5th, we will be honoring and celebrating our very own shepherd of this house, Pastor Dexter Nuttall's 14th pastoral anniversary. The Reverend Dr. Dominique Robinson of Austin, Texas will be our guest speaker for this momentous occasion. You all are invited to bless our very own pastor with an anniversary card to celebrate this, his ministry. By placing a card in a special drop box in a narthex or mailing it directly here to the church. Our music and arts ministry invites you to join them for a special night called In His Image on Friday, July 1st at 7 p.m. A beautiful bouquet of gifted artists and Levites will share their love for Christ by song, dance, poetry, spoken word, rap, mimers, and other art forms. Don't miss this amazing night as we are moved to worship in his purpose. If you are interested in participating, please email mwa at newbethaldc.org by Wednesday, June 8th. And the SHARE ministry offers monthly healthy, nutritious groceries at a discount. Value packages cost just $22, and they include $40 to $45 worth of basic healthy groceries. The June packages have several options to choose from. The standard value package for $22, the produce box for $21, the sirloin steak special for $37, and the premium seafood box for $37. To order your share package, go to the event page at newbethaldc.org to provide your information. The last day to order June share packages is June 12th. With pickup date scheduled for June 24th, please don't miss it. A key part of our LightPoint ministry mission is to invest in and support our future leaders of tomorrow. And we are doing so by offering LightPoint's 2022's Aiming Higher Scholarship. These $1,000 need-based scholarships are for graduating high school seniors. Have you ever pondered a deeper knowledge of why you believe what you believe? Starting on June 22nd at 7 p.m., the NBBC Academy will be starting a six-week training session on the book called Through the Eyes of Color. 
This is a biblical study for all believers that will help you know what you believe and the why. We will engage the scriptures to learn about black heroes of the faith and to answer the common questions that are often asked within the black community. If you want to take part in this virtual six week event, please sign up at newbethldc.org backslash events. And if this is your first time worshiping with us, we need you, we want you, and we desire to be connected to you. So please text guest to 202-798-8927. Why? Because New Bethel is every and anywhere. Ministry continues to move and grow and make an impact in our community, and we do so with your help. So we need you to bless this ministry with your tithes and offerings. There's five ways to give, saints, by mail, mailing your offering at 1739 9th Street Northwest, Washington, D.C., 2001, via our church website at newbethldc.org, our Giveify app, or text the word GIVE to 202-759-6222, or simply, if you're here in the sanctuary, place your offerings in the receptacles in the rear of the church. For all additional church initiatives, happenings, and what we're doing in the community, and volunteer opportunities, please go and check out our church website. This concludes our announcements, and I leave you with this. There was not a price to pay for us that Jesus did not do for just one of us, but all of us. So take that personally and get in right relationship with him, because I promise you, you won't regret it. Let's get back to worship. Good morning, New Bethel. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Can we give God praise? Good morning. Good morning to New Bethel anywhere in our online community. We're here to worship God together this morning. Amen. Anybody happy that it's warm outside? You know, the beginning of May felt like March. <laughs> so God has blessed us and he's kept us. And the fact that we're able to know the temperature and to be able to feel the difference in the temperature, we praise God for that. So this morning, we come to sing, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Come on, y'all can get on up. You can clap with us. Hey. If you don't know the song, you can look at the screen and grab the words for yourself this morning. Hey.
for certain is that we serve a good God. He's a great God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're going to worship God together. There's a song that, um, I know it's not you Sunday, but it's a song that some of us millennials grew up on. And the song says, you don't have to worry. And don't you be afraid. Joy is coming in the morning. And sometimes it may actually be morning time. And some may, sometimes it may be at midnight when it doesn't look like it's the morning, but it is the morning time. So I know this is, my, we, you know, we in Memorial Day weekend. So some of us are just stopping past church this morning. But I came to half church. <laughs> so we're going to flow in God this morning. But I want us who know the song to sing the song with freedom. Let it minister to your heart. Because you don't have to worry. And you don't have to be afraid. Hey.
Come on, New Bethel. You can depend on God. You can lean on him and you can trust him this morning. Good morning, good morning, New Bethel. Isn't God just so good? Can't we just give him another praise, another Shabbat praise for how wonderful he is, for how majestic he is, how awesome he is. He is truly the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We made it through another week, y'all. That's something to celebrate. We made it another seven days. So let's celebrate the small things. Let's celebrate the things that we often overlook because God is just so good, so good. I'm Carissa, and I'll be here this morning during your scripture and prayer. So, so good to see all of you who made it out during the holiday weekend. <laughs> okay, go with me to Psalm 91.1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him I will trust Surely he shall deliver you from the stare, the snare of the fowler, and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. It shall not come near you. It shall not come near you. Dear Father God, just thank you for bringing us to another Sunday, Father God. Just a moment to wake up, to breathe, Father God, is something we need to all be in awe in, Father God, because you are just so merciful. I ask that this morning we are reminded that we can always dwell in the secret place with you, that we can always take cover, Father God, within you. You make it clear that we are a part of your kingdom, we are your children, so let us be reminded that we can dwell, Father God, in the quiet moments with you. You. We can dwell, Father God, in the war times with you. We can dwell, Father God, night and day, any hour, any minute with you, Father God, because we have that direct connection to you as a child of God. So let us be reminded who may be feeling disconnected this morning that we can always come to you. You will always have open arms for us. You always make a place open and welcoming for us, even when we don't even want to welcome ourselves, Father God, because that's how good you are. So let us be reminded that even in the midst of a pandemic that father god you keep us safe you hold us close you wrap your arms around us always as your children because you are so so good to us even when we feel as though we don't deserve it you still show us mercy you show us honor you show us grace you show us patience you show us kindness you show us agape love because that is who you are, the almighty father, the almighty God, the thing that stands when time is no longer, you are still in place in the heavenly realm. So let us be reminded that we can dwell with you. Any outside noise, any chaos, any clutter, Father God, you make the space open, you make the space serene just for us. So let us be reminded of that, that we can dwell in your presence. We can dwell in your presence. We can dwell in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Give God a round of applause. Give him a round of applause. Put your hands together and just give God a round of applause. I don't know about you, but there's been some fiery darts that have, have come my way. They, 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 they came across this ear and came across that ear, but, but I know that has kept me that the darts that were meant for me they didn't hit me and I'm I'm just so grateful for that and so my name is Reverend Dr. Roger Mitchell I'm one of the the ministers here and um today we're celebrating NB anywhere and so for those of you that don't know uh, uh, what NB Anywhere is, look to your left, look to your right, you are in NB Anywhere. This is where New Bethel is. New Bethel is in this sanctuary. New Bethel is online. I don't, I'll look here, I don't know where the cameras are. They, they are, they are online. It is anywhere in the world. And we literally have members at, of New Bethel Baptist Church 
everywhere in the world. Across this country, on the continent of Africa, we have people that have found us during this pandemic. Some of you here in the sanctuary have found us during this pandemic looking for where God could show up in your life. And so what we've realized is that we can't put God in a building. We can't put him uh, in, in, a, in, in a singular space. We have to be open to what God can do in our, not only in our lives, but in this world. And so there's a new discipleship that's happening. And so we want to introduce you to, to one of our good friends. Her name is Kayla Montgomery. And Kayla found us during, during the COVID pandemic here in D.C., but never stepped foot in the church, in the building, and now is in St. Louis, Missouri. And so she prepared a little video for us. And so I want you guys to listen see how God is working in her life. Good morning, New Bethel. Since we're spotlighting NB Anywhere this Sunday, Minister Lisa asked me to pop in and share what drew me to the church and prompted me to join last month. I actually came across NB service at the start of the pandemic when my line sister and I were quarantining in DC and looking for spiritual guidance. We actually tried a few services but what kept us coming back to New Bethel was the message. It was scripturally sound, delivered with love, and resonated with my spirit. I could feel the presence of the Lord. So what started as voyeurism quickly became experiential and something I looked forward to week after week. Service became my anchor and it was accessible. So there was no doubt in my mind that I keep attending even when I moved back home to St. Louis last year but I kept waiting for that moment of disconnection when streaming service would become an afterthought or I would feel convicted to seek out a local church where I could fellowship. Instead of pulling me away, <laughs> I actually started to feel that tug every time the call was issued to join the church, but my hesitation continued until I began to realize community and church can't be confined to four walls. And then it was time for me to act on my conviction. So I joined New Bethel, never having stepped foot in the sanctuary, settling into a life outside of the DMV and showing up as my imperfect self. Because the only thing that was truly required was that I answer the call. So thank you, New Bethel, for creating a space where I can show up and connect no matter where I am in the country. And if anyone else is streaming in from St. Louis, hit me up and we can set up a watch party together. Good morning, New Bethel. What she reminds us is that you can be a leader in God's kingdom no matter where you are. And so what, what, what pastor's doing here and what all the ministers are doing here is setting up an opportunity for you to be a leader in the kingdom. Is that... Is somebody calling into the church? Listen, come on now. Answer the phone. It, it's Rossman. My goodness, Minister Rossman, why are you calling into the church? I'm in the middle of service. Hey, give shout out to NB to, to Minister Roshman. It's a little bit of a delay. <laughs> to talk about this NB anywhere, man. It is it is amazing. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, watching you guys on YouTube right now live. Heard you talk about NB anywhere, and wanted to just say how amazing it is that I can participate all the way from Atlanta and still feel connected to you guys in DC. That's what NB Anywhere is about. Well, listen, uh, Minister Roshman, tell us what you're doing in Atlanta, Georgia to, to, oh, to further the kingdom. I got some things cooking down here, bro. So uh, as part of the academy, we're going to be launching a new series called 
through the eyes of color. And through the eyes of color, it's gonna be a, a group where uh, we get together and we talk about things from a biblical perspective, like is Christianity the white man's religion? Uh, we're gonna talk about black people that are in the Bible. Did you know in Acts 13 that they talk about a man named Simon who was called Niger, Niger being Latin for black? So there are black people in the scriptures. We're gonna talk about things like uh, slavery in the Bible, you know, and, and it's just a way for us to stay connected, for us to read through scriptures, for us to understand and know what it is that we believe. And the cool thing about it is that because it's connected through MB Anywhere, you can be anywhere and participate. Here in Atlanta, there in DC, Chicago, California, Africa, wherever. Listen, Rashman, listen, we only have a little bit of time left because you didn't disturb the whole situation. <laughs> so, like I said, man, I wanted to call in and just tell you how excited I am about MB Anywhere. I see you guys. I'll participate in the, here in Atlanta, man, and it's just, it's just wonderful what God is doing. Well, thank you, brother. We can't wait to see you. We can't wait to when you're back in D.C. And if anybody's in Atlanta, make sure you go see Minister Rashman. We'll see you yeah. at the NBA, uh, NBA Academy. So, so I'm going to hang out with you, right? Uh, I'm, I'm going to stay here and watch service through, through, the, through the Zoom meeting. We're we going to do that like that. Then I can, you know, participate. We're we going to do that, right? That's right. Okay. Sounds good. I'm, I'm going to sit here. All right. <laughs> Give Minister Rashman a hand of applause. Minister Rashman uh, became a minister here at New Bethel Baptist Church, is a very close-knit part of this family, and has taken this, his calling and his gift to Atlanta, Georgia. So, again, no matter where you are in the world, no matter where you are in this country, know that God wants to work with you, work through the things in your heart, so that you can do the things that he's calling you to do. And so we're not a perfect church, but we absolutely serve a perfect God. Amen? Amen. So we just thank you again. We're celebrating NB Anywhere, and enjoy the rest of the service. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. We're preparing for the word. Anybody excited about the word of the Lord? <laughs> As Kayla said, she joined because of the word. Amen. So our, our service is about the word and the worship. We try not to do too much in between the word and the worship. Amen. Amen. And our pastor's here this morning. So if you've been watching, if you've been coming, you know he's been traveling. So he's back here <laughs> at his church. And if he had his way, he'd probably move me over right now and be like, I got to preach. <laughs> but we're going to dwell in the presence of the Lord for one moment. We're going to sing about whew, the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living.
He stands at the door of our heart and he knocks. That's what the Bible says. He knocks. And sometimes, sometimes we don't want to hear it. So we ignore, we ignore the knock. We ignore the bell. We ignore the ring. We ignore the signs. We ignore the word. Because we really don't want to answer it. But Miss Kayla says sometimes it's all about the call. So if he's at your door, lightly knocking, because God, I just said invaders because that's what I need him to do. He can kick my door down. But some of us may not be ready yet. So Lord, I, I want you to be at a place today when pastor gets up to preach and say, I welcome you in. you in, oh God, without hold back, without restraint. Have your way. Have your way, God, in our circumstances, in our situations. Have your way in the stuff that we have been keeping from you, the stuff that we've been holding back from you, the stuff that we have been continuing, oh God, to do the lifestyles, the habits, the behaviors, the mentality, the mindset, the attitude. Have your way, God. 
that we might be changed. Have mercy on me, O God, and hold not the deeds of this your servant against these your people. We know that you are a miracle working God. So break yokes today. Remove addictions today. Change minds today. Men broken hearts today. Thank you for your presence. And we give you worship. In the great name of Jesus, all the folk who know he's alive and in the room where you are, shout amen and give God an offering of worship. Hallelujah. 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 Anybody other than me feel the presence of God in the room today? I want to I wanna thank all of you for pressing your way to come and to be present today because I know for some of you it was a challenge to get here. It was a challenge to get here for all kinds of reasons, not the least of which are the events and activities taking place in the city. And yet you pressed your way and you're here and, and I want to celebrate those who even though you got frustrated because you couldn't make it, you're still in the room with us by way of technology. And so I want you to know that we feel your presence. And more important than that, I want you to know that God sees and is with you where you are. And that's good news. Um, we, we have been in a series that we call Transform. And uh, I want to complete that series today. Before I do that, there are a couple things I want to I wanna do. I, I want to encourage anybody uh, who has a loved one, a friend, a family member who has been lost in service of this country. That's what Memorial Day is all about. Uh, and so I want you to know that we are praying for you and grateful for the sacrifice and the service that you have made and given to this country as well. I also want to acknowledge that there's been a lot that's happened since the last time I stood here uh, to share and in the preached word. And specifically things that come to mind are, are, are those events in Texas, and the event in Buffalo. And I wish I had words that were suitable to address the, the pain that they feel. I know they feel it because I feel it. And I'm sure y'all feel it as well. And the anger that we have at people who come up with excuse after excuse after excuse to not do what is right. And the Bible is true. You reap what you sow. And in so many ways, we're reaping what we have sown. And yet we are praying that God would turn a situation around. Because we have a God that's able to do that. So we're praying for you, Texas. We're praying for you, Buffalo. We're praying for all of us who feel that pain and that hurt. And then I also want to remind you about an announcement that you heard, which is that on Wednesday we're having a candidates forum here. And you might feel like that's a whiplash kind of turn, but I want to suggest that it's not. 
because the transformation that we desire on the inside of each of us ought to spill over so that there's transformation in the space around us. And so we don't engage in civic activity because of race or because of politics. We engage in it because of kingdom. Thy kingdom come on earth. And that's up to us. So it's important that we be present. I, I want people to know, if you're not from D.C., you need to know that there was a time that nothing happened without the endorsement of the church. And so on Wednesday, I want people to come and be on this platform and to look and to see people that are of kingdom orientation and on assignment to hold people accountable that they might operate under the auspices of kingdom. Because if you don't, we're dealing with some stuff right now because of people who don't. Some people in a race that is taking place this year some people who get drunk with power and authority. I ain't come to preach about that, but I'm going to preach about it since I'm here. And so I, I want to encourage you to be, to be present if you are able to do that. All right. Let's t- turn to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. There we will find what it is that God wants to say to us today, I believe, as we complete this series that we've called Transform, Acts chapter 2. If you are able to stand, I invite you to do that. That is how they did it in biblical times. When the word of God came forward, the people stood as a sign of honor and recognition to who it is that's speaking. That's not me. That is the one whose word it is. Here it is, Acts chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Amen. You may have your seats. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Um. This is the fourth installment in this series that we've called Transform, and I encourage you, if you've not been present or not received the prior three installments, you can check them out on YouTube or on the church's website. Um, Real quick overview, uh, part one, we talked about the fact that transformation requires an openness to divine disclosure. And so we talked about Joseph of Arimathea. Uh, and, and his willingness uh, to, to, to disrobe himself of all of the stuff uh, and concern about what people thought about him to the possibility of who this Jesus is and what it is that this Jesus did. And the point of the matter is, if you're open to what it is that God can do, then God can do it. So that, that was part one. Part two, we talked about trauma and transformation. Trauma and transformation, because wherever there is trauma, there is the potential for transformation. And so we talked about Abraham uh, and Sarai and, and Hagar and the trauma that Hagar experienced, which was hard and difficult and painful. But we also know that trauma is transactional. That is to say that trauma is not Permanent. It's transactional. It will only last as long as you hold on to it. So even in your trauma, it can be a platform for transformation as long as you don't abandon the process. Because we're all in process. Part three, we talked about the the actual dynamics of transformation. Uh, The fact is that transformation does not happen overnight. And I don't know why it is that we think 
that transformation is going to happen overnight. The stuff you got yourself into didn't happen overnight. So what makes you think that getting out of it is going to happen overnight? No, it takes a process. Somebody say a process. True transformation will always take time. But here it is. When you commit to the process, God will take care of the details. There's one more piece that's necessary to complete uh, this Transform series. Uh, and I want to I begin by introducing you to a new friend of mine. Many of you know that I just spent a week in Dakar, Senegal. Uh, and it was a mission assignment. That's where I got this from. I got this from Dakar, Senegal. It's, it's authentic. It ain't, it ain't come from PG Plaza or one of the stores. It's... <laughs> I'm just saying, because, you know, they got these vendors out here on the streets, and some of y'all get stuff, you know, and you say, oh, this is from... Yeah, this, this, is, this is from Dakar. And, and, and while, I was, while I was in Dakar, I met a brother, a new friend. His name is Seydou Sissoko. Seydou Sissoko. Seydou was part of my host team. And I got to know him during my time in Senegal. Seydou is a Muslim brother from Dakar. But he's also lived in New Jersey, and he's also lived in California, and he's lived in places and countries outside of Africa. He has family even in Europe and other parts of the world. His English is way better than my French or Wolof. Wolof is the language that's spoken in Dakar. And his English is a whole lot better than mine is with French. But the thing I love about Seydu is he loves his country. He loves his country. He, he, he's excited about the fact that his homeland is Africa. And I suspect then that Seydu would say that even when he was not in Africa and in the times when he has not been in his homeland, he is still connected to Africa in ways that show up in how he lives. He has a dialect and an accent that he takes with him wherever he goes. He has an allegiance and a loyalty and a heart and a passion that is committed to his homeland of Africa. And so I told you that there's one more piece to this transform dynamic that I believe that not only does Seydu illustrate it for us, but our entire worship experience today makes it clear. Here's the point. Commitment to healthy community is critical for transformation. That's what I need for you to know. Commitment to community is critical. I didn't say good. I didn't say helpful. I said it's critical for transformation. And so here we are in Acts chapter 2 verse 1. This, this verse is the beginning of a narrative that describes Pentecost. Somebody say Pentecost. And I know that, I know that there are some uh, uh, students in the room of the Word who know that Pentecost is actually next Sunday on the liturgical calendar. But I want to talk about Pentecost today. I want to talk about today because I think that it makes clear that there is something that happens without which I'm not sure Pentecost as we see it in the text happens. Here's what we know. The church is launched in the book of Acts. In, in Acts chapter 1, verse 6, we see Jesus and the ascension. And the disciples are standing around watching and after the ascension, they go into a room where Pentecost happens. Here's the key. They go together. 
And so Acts chapter 1 verse 14 gives us some insight. Matter of fact, let me read 13 and 14. It says, when they arrived, they went upstairs. After leaving the ascension, they'd go upstairs where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon, the zealot, and Judas, son of James. I'm going to tell you why that's important in a minute. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Somebody say, together. They were together. We also know that in the beginning of Jesus' ministry, Jesus never sent out a single disciple to do work by himself. Matter of fact, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 6 and 7, lays it out for us. Jesus is going around, and he's teaching from village to village. And, and, and then it says, calling the twelve he began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. So then, I don't think it's a surprise that as Pentecost is about to happen, Luke, who is the writer of Acts, he says that when Pentecost came, they were together. Because here's the bottom line. When there is commitment to community, Transformation of hearts, minds, and space divinely happens. That's what I need for you to learn. That's what I need for you to know today. When there is a commitment to community, then transformation of hearts and minds, but also space, organically, divinely happens. Here it is. Here's why the commitment to community is critical to transformation. Here it is, if you're taking notes. Number one, commitment to community is critical for transformation because healthy community attracts the Holy Spirit. Healthy community attracts the Holy Spirit. There's something that is so, that is so uh, clear in the verse that you could literally overlook it. It does not say that Pentecost brought the disciples together. It does not say that Pentecost was the reason that they got together. What it says is that they were together and then Pentecost happened. I need for you all to see this. I need for you not take, not, not, not brush over and, and quickly read uh, over and through Scripture because I need for you to see. It, it says, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. That, that, that's important. That's important. Um, listen, uh, lonely is a dangerous place to be. Lonely is a dangerous space even to visit. Some of us are afraid of being alone. So much so that we don't understand that there are seasons when God wants you to be by yourself. God, if I had more time, I would talk about this real deep. Because some of us gravitate toward people because you don't like you. You don't like you. You don't like what you've done. You don't like where you've been. You don't like how things have happened. You don't like how things have turned out. And so you gravitate toward people that ain't good for you because you don't like you. But you got to understand that there's a difference between being alone and being lonely. I love that scripture uh, that Carissa read. He that dwells in the shelter of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There's a secret space. What's your secret space? The secret space, the space where just you and God can commune. Can I just advise you and counsel you? Find yourself a secret space. 
I, 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 I'm not talking about a physical location because sometimes hell breaks loose after you've left home. And so you need a secret space that you can go to, that you can call on the name of the Lord. It might be in the meeting and you can still be in your secret space. There might be other folks around you and you can still be in your secret space. You need a secret space. And it's more, it's more than, 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 than the fact that they were uh, um, um, uh, part of this body. They, what happened is that their secret space time with God spilled over into this community. Because you can't bring what you don't have. You can't give what you don't have. And, and, and here's the thing, here's the thing. This is important for today. It's more than just a physical space. Yes, they were in the same space at the same time, but I want to suggest to you that there was more than just a physical connection that they had. I want to suggest that when the verse says that they were all together in one place, that there's a spiritual dynamic that's going on here. Okay, um, Paul writes most of the New Testament. And he has a word that he uses to describe the church. The word is ecclesia. Somebody say ecclesia. When, when, when Paul uses that word, he's not talking about New Bethel. He's not talking about Shiloh. He's not talking about New Hope or whatever the name is of your church. He ain't talking about any of those spaces. What Paul is talking about is a global entity that is bigger than what any of us can see, and yet all of us can be part of. In other words, you don't have to be in the building to be in the church. That's, that, that's the reason why I love what it is that we've done today and what it is that God has birthed in this place through NB Anywhere. I need for y'all to know that you don't have to be here to be here. I love the fact that, that, that I can worship and be among the body and not be physically present in the body. Yes, you ought to make yourself to the sanctuary sometimes. Let me be clear. Yes, you ought to make sure that you are present in the body, in the physical space sometimes. But I don't know about you, but it's good news to me that I don't have to be in the space to be in the space. I can go into the holy of holies. All by myself. Listen, I need for y'all to get this. I need for y'all to get this. When, when praise team is up here doing what it is that they do, that ain't a performance. That's not to entertain you and make you clap your hands. You need to know that there's some work that they've done before it is that they've gotten here, and I ain't talking about rehearsal. I'm talking about a spiritual space. And then each of them goes into that space and they invite you to come in. Now, if none of y'all clap, they still going to go in. If none of y'all lift your hands, they still going to go in. If none of y'all stand up, they still going to go in. Because they have a relationship and understand that this God that they serve is bigger than this moment. I need you to know that whatever it is that you're dealing with, the God that you serve is bigger than that. I need you to know that whatever it is that you are struggling with, the God you serve is bigger than that. I need you to know that what the doctor has told you, the God you serve is bigger than that. And, and, and I need for you to know, I need for you to know that if you are committed to maintaining the connection, when God's people are connected, Pentecost can happen. So I don't know about you, but I have Pentecost all by myself sometimes. I have Pentecost before I come here. Because I know y'all ain't going to say nothing to me anyway. So I have Pentecost all by myself. I tell him how good he is. I tell him how wonderful he is. I tell him how kind he is. And I ask him to come in and don't just come in and visit, but come and dwell. Come and hang out. Come and be with. Come and commune with me because I need thee. So I need for you to know that healthy community 
it attracts the Holy Spirit. And that's what we see happening. If you read the rest of what it is in this Pentecost narrative, you'll find that they saw tongues of fire resting on each of them. And, and, and even there were the folks from outside who weren't up in the room who came and, and came to understand there must be something different that's going on here. It's, it's interesting to me how people who don't know God have reverence, more reverence for God than sometimes the people in the church. Sometimes they have more reverence. And, and this is the reason why when you show up, they straighten up. Somebody know what I'm talking about. When, when, when you come in the room, this happens to me all the time. I'm a pastor, right? That I come in the room, oh, I'm sorry, pass. I need you to pray for me, pass. I need for somebody to know that that ain't about you. That ain't about me. But there's something that's within me. Because Holy Spirit power, when I've come out of Pentecost, it can't be contained in a cup. It just spoils over on everything around you. So I need, I need for you to know, I need for you to know, I need for you to know that healthy community attracts the Holy Spirit. You're in fellowship with him. You, you, you are a co-laborer, a co-participant with what it is that God wants to do in your life. And here's the thing, here's the thing. This is the second point right here. Your environment determines the extent of your growth. It's your environment that determines the extent of your growth. Um, all the names of the disciples that are listed in Acts chapter 1, you, you might think that ha that serves no purpose. But the reason that those names have to be listed, and you see these roles of individuals' names throughout Scripture, it's because each of them has a story. And it's a different story from any of the other stories. So they share something in common, but how they got there whew, is a different journey. And so despite where they've been and how they've gotten there, God has brought them to this moment so that they can experience it together. Because your environment determines the nature and extent of your growth. Yes. Not all growth is good growth. Not all growth is God growth. Maybe that's the way I should have said it. It, 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 is, it is possible for you to grow in God, for you to get closer to God, but I need for you to know it's also possible for you to grow away from God. I need for you to know that it's possible for you to move further away from God. And, and this is why they, they are together when the Spirit falls down. Colossians chapter 2 says it real nice. Just as you received Jesus, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted in Him, built in Him, strengthened in the faith, as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. It's Colossians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. Write it down. Make sure that you got it. Because, because just like you can grow closer to God, you can grow away from God. And spirits are contagious. <laughs> so spirits are contagious. That's the reason why you cuss more when you're around people who cuss. I can't get no help up in here, Dion. I can't get no help. Because spirits are contagious. That's why you always trying to get yours when the people around you are trying to get theirs. That's the mentality. That's the culture. It's because spirits are contagious. That's the reason why you're more promiscuous when you're around people who are promiscuous. I wish I had some help up in here, Mike. Because spirits are contagious. But the Spirit of God is also contagious. The Spirit of God is a spirit 
that's above all other spirits has more power than other spirits. And so then when you are around people who love God, you tend to gravitate toward God. When you are around people who serve God, you tend to be willing and wanting to serve God. When you're around others who are excited about God, then you get excited about God. When you're around people who want to learn more of God, then all of a sudden you want to learn more of God. It not only changes you, but it changes everything and everybody around you. So let me give you a little bit of a litmus test. If you really want to know if God is really working in and through your life, don't look at your life. Look at the life of those around you. Look at the stuff around you. See what people are doing and saying around you. Find out how people are acting around you. Because uh, one songwriter said, it's just a, when you are in relationship with Jesus, something on the inside. Let me give it the way the church folk can get it. Something on the inside, Moses, shows up on the outside because I've been changed. And it's not that everything is perfect. Matter of fact, it, ain't made, it may not even be that everything is good. It's just that when you have something like the Spirit of God, you can't even fully explain it. You can't even articulate it. But here's what you do know. I got peace that passes understanding. Here's what you do know. I got joy that didn't come from my job. And this joy that I have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. Because the Holy Spirit is the agent of transformation and the Holy Spirit is contagious. That's the reason why you can be getting your praise on on your row and somebody is seated way down on the other end of the row. It might take a minute, but just let the Spirit have its way. That's the language you used to use in church, Daryl. Let the Spirit have its way. And all of a sudden, that fire catches on fire over there, catches on fire back there, catches on fire somebody else, because the Spirit of God is like fire that's caught up in my bones. And so what you become is determined by the soil that you plant yourself in. <laughs> Woo. My God. Okay, uh, you all do know that this country has a history of racism and oppression and discrimination. And you also need to know that it ain't new. It started before there was an America. And so the soil out of which everything in this country, all the institutions, all the systems is built is corrupt soil. So what you sow, you will. I wish I had some help up in here. All I'm trying to tell you is that what you become is determined by your soil. Okay, let me give it to you a little easier. Um, my, my youngest, my oldest daughter, Chandler, um, she calls herself now a plant mom. That she says she's a plant mom. I ain't never been no plant dad. My wife has started keeping a plant or two, but she ain't never really had no green thumb. But her grandmama got plants that looked like a vine in the whole bathroom. And there's a close relationship between grandma and granddaughter. And so something I conclude was imparted into Chandler to make her say, I'm a plant mom. Got people taking care of her plants when she ain't there. And so the other day, Rod, she came to me and she said, Dad, um, how, how do you repot a plant? How do you repot a plant? And I ain't no plant dad, but I know at least that much. You, 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 you get another pot. <laughs> and you put the plant in the new pot. 
And what she says to me is, okay, okay, I think I got it. Because what's happening is my plant is getting too big. My, I, I've been watering the plant. I'm a plant mom now. And my plant is starting to grow and to flourish and to produce. And it can't stay in the same pot. It's got to move into a new pot so it can have more room to grow. And I stopped by to tell somebody that where you plant yourself determines how much growth and the nature of the growth that you have. You are just a, pan, a planted, a potted plant. And it may be time for you to replant yourself into a new space with new relationships and new friends and new people who love the Lord. Because I need for you to know that your environment determines the nature and extent of your growth. It's no mystery why you're moving away from God. Look who you're hanging out with. It's no mystery that you don't feel God. I want to feel God. I want to hear God talking to me. Well, who are you talking to? Your environment determines the nature and the extent of your growth. And then here's the last thing. Here's the last thing, the last, the last reason that, that, that you've got to be committed to community. It's because transformation needs a witness. Transformation needs a witness. Transformation needs a witness. Um, I love the Pentecost narrative because it starts in the room, but it don't stay in the room. <laughs> it starts with just 120, but it don't stay with just 120. It starts with just those, and they're scared, and they're afraid, and they're unsure, and they're imperfect, and they're broken. But when the Spirit falls, something happens, not just in the room, but hallelujah, it happens outside the room. Because what it says is in verse 5 of chapter 2 that there were staying in Jerusalem some folk from every nation. And when they heard the sound, all they did was hear the sound. The crowd came together because transformation needs a witness. Okay, let me give you two again. Uh, in Mark chapter 6, verses 6 and 7, Jesus doesn't send out disciples one by one. He sends them out two by two. Because sometimes it's okay to admit that you need a testimony of somebody else. Sometimes it's okay for you to admit that you need somebody to pray for you. Sometimes it's okay for you to admit that you are mad at the world. And sometimes the angel that you're looking to come from heaven is actually seated right next to you. And that's the one that God is using. That's the blessing that God is giving. That's the way that God is making God's self reveal to you. It's okay to admit that you need help to make it through. That's what church is about. Listen, it ain't about perfect people. It's about broken people. It's about imperfect people who know that there's nothing like grace, who understand that grace is how I've made it. Grace is how I've survived. Grace is why I'm still here. Grace is why I haven't lost my mind. Grace is why I haven't taken my own life. Oh, grace. And it needs a witness. So I wish I had a witness in the house. I don't, don't look like I got no witnesses today. But let me tell you this last little story, and then I'm going to be out your way so you can make your way to Memorial Day brunch. While I was in Senegal, somebody told me a story about a ritual in Africa where somebody dresses like a warrior, and they literally get dressed up looking like something that I imagine the way John the Baptist look, used to look. Crazy, woolly, mask costume and they literally get a machete and they go out in the street looking for demons now 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 I didn't see this while I was there but I heard the story from somebody who saw it and because I trust the person that told me I don't need to see it 
I trust the person that told me. I trust the person that actually saw it, and I believe that what they told me is true. That's what happened at Pentecost. There were people in the room who experienced it for themselves. Then there were others who weren't in the room that heard about it, and they decided that they believed it because they saw a change in the lives of those individual names who were listed in the text. One of them used to be a liar. One of them used to be a tax collector. One of them used to be a whoremongerer. One of them used to be a liar. One of them used to cheat their way through life. One of them did stuff to get attention, and yet they still made the list. Can I talk to somebody who falls into one of those categories? Can I talk to somebody who may fit another category that I didn't even mention? If you heard about the grace, if you hear about the power, if you hear about the Spirit, the same Holy Ghost that opened up the heavens on Pentecost will open up the heavens on you. The same God who gave Pentecost power back in Acts can give Pentecost power in Northwest Shaw. The same God who gave healing ability in Acts is the same God that will pour healing out on you. Is there anybody in the house that believes Pentecost is still possible? Not back then, but here and now. Not back then, but in your own life. Not back then, but in your own finances, in your own health, in your own family. God is able to allow Pentecost and you don't have to have been in the room to experience the power. You don't have to be in the building to know God is in the building. You don't have to be present in the room for God to come to where you are. You just got to be willing to commit to community and be part of community wherever it is that you are and know that God is moving in that space. Know that God is moving in that space. You were not made to live on an island. You were made to be in connectionship and relationship and part of the body of Christ. And somebody here has been trying to navigate by yourself for too long. Somebody here has been trying to navigate the space and the journey of life on your own. You need to know that God has allowed this moment, this time, in order for you to change course and to make commitment to community in order that the Spirit of God can allow you to experience Pentecost. Come on, stand to your feet with me. We're done. It is, it, it's not optional. It's not good. It's not necessary. It's not a great thing. It is critical that you commit to community in order for you to experience the nature and extent of growth that God intends for your life. And so, Father, we bless you and we thank you for the gift of community. We thank you for your spirit that is moving and speaking even right now. We thank you, God, that your spirit is moving and speaking not just in this room, but you're moving and speaking in Atlanta and in Missouri and in California and in Senegal and in Europe. You are moving and speaking everywhere. And you're an extending an invitation to us. So I pray now for somebody, God, who knows that their name is listed among the roll, who knows that they are imperfect, who knows that they are broken, and knows that you extend grace through the cross of Jesus Christ and his shed blood on Calvary. 
Thank you, oh God, for your Holy Spirit. Move somebody even right now that they might embrace and commit to community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Was the word blessing for anybody today? The word is a blessing for anybody in the house. It's not just community that invites the Holy Spirit. It's healthy community. And what makes healthy community ain't perfection. What, help, what makes healthy community is pursuit. Pursuit of a perfect God. And so I extend an invitation for somebody that's here. If you want to make this your church, if you want to make this your community, if you want to be part of this body and work it out in this space, come on, grab your phone, grab your stuff, just meet me right here. Grab your phone, grab your stuff, meet me right here. I invite you to come. Come on. Those who are online, we invite you to text CONNECT to 202-798-8927. I see you coming. Come on. Y'all celebrate her. Bless you. What's your name? What's your Rebecca. name? Rebecca. Welcome, Rebecca. Hang out here for just one minute. Come on, there's somebody else. Anybody else in the room? Anybody else in the room? You want to make New Bethel your church. And even more than that, you want to make Christ your king and your savior. You can come. Today is the day. God has you here on purpose. Not by accident, but on purpose. Don't put it off. Don't make excuses. Don't cut your eyes to the left or to the right. That's good, bro. Come on. Come on, bro. Y'all celebrate him. I love that song. I'm sorry. I just had to join in. Y'all come on up here. Has come over. That's good, bro. I see you. Come on. Bless you, brother. What's your name? Dennis Hathaway. Dennis, Dennis. Hang out here. Change. Anybody else in the room? Come on. I'm so glad. It's not too late. Until we come. Y'all, I celebrate these three that have walked that long aisle. <laughs> Hallelujah. So listen, here's how it works. We have some folks that we call altar counselors, all right? They're just going to chat with you for a few. This all happens by phone, right? So um, they're going to escort you just outside the door allow you to share whatever information, ask whatever questions it is that you have, pray with you, and just celebrate what it is that God has done in the transformation and the process and the journey that God is moving you out toward. And I just want to be the first to tell you how proud I am of you. New Bethlehem, help me celebrate them, won't you? He changed. If you are online, it doesn't matter where you are, I want you to text CONNECT to that number that's on your screen, 202-798-8927. And I'm going to do something a little bit different. We haven't done this since the pandemic. Um, I want to make sure that my ministers and altar counselors, y'all just kind of hang out around the front here because it is impressed in my spirit that there's somebody else in the room who really wanted to make that walk, but, but, but for whatever reason, they were not able to get themselves over the speed bump. And I want you to know that re relationship and salvation with Jesus Christ can happen even after benediction. All right? So they're going to be up here. Uh, and, and, and here's what I want you to do. If, if, if that's you, I just want you to come to one of the ministers and just say, Pastor was talking to me. All right? You can just come and say, Pastor was talking to me. All right? Can we do that? Can we do that? Why y'all look? I'm asking you a question. Can we do that? 
All right. May the grace and the peace and the love of our God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, rest, rule, cover, and abide with you in the person and the power of His Holy Spirit. Not just today, not just tomorrow, but even forevermore all week long. Let all the people who know and love God shout amen. amen. Love y'all. Have a great day. want to make sure that anybody from NBA, look, we are, we are also right here. That's Come it. Come on in. That's it. That's it. I so mean, I made the, up. listen, the points, I, I just got to, I got the, he just finished his series oh on God. transformation, right? Yeah. Openness to God's disclosure, trauma yeah. and transformation, the dynamics, the process of transformation, yeah. and now commitment to commitment community, to community. Critical, critical to transformation. Healthy community. Healthy community. My God. Just to be able to come in and connect with people is what gets me closer to God. That's awesome right there. No, no, no. And I think, listen, it doesn't matter. doesn't matter if you missed a portion yeah. of it. You can go back and watch it. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it is. But at the end of the day, let me tell you something. He talked about, he went from Acts 2-1. Yeah, man. Right? And made it really, really said, simple. together. They were together. They were together. That's it. They, they were, were together. together. And that was it. Listen, one of the points said, transformation needs a witness. Oh, you can't so have a witness if you're not together with somebody. That's so good. So come on and get connected with us. Listen, 798-202-798-8927. That's connect. Text connect to that. Yeah. Because we want you as part of the, the New family. Bethel family. The family. What you going to do this week? Listen, I, I'm going to rest tomorrow. Yeah. I'm going to rest tomorrow, but okay. I do. I'm going to get out there with the family, do the memorial thing. Yeah. So, but I'm going to rest. Well, listen. I'm going to rest. You rest. Enjoy. Enjoy the rest of your long weekend if you have it. Enjoy work. Um, and, 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 and remember that we're praying for you and praying yes. for your family and can't wait yes. to be in fellowship with you. And God bless you. Those of you all that are have family that have gone on, yeah. God bless you. We pray for you. We keep you lifted. And we're thankful for uh, your family members that have given their lives to protect our lives. Amen. God bless you. Amen.